Shout out to Cat for Fashion School in Derby, England for introducing me to the Newark AI app. I'm excited to share what this app can do and show you how you can possibly incorporate this into your current design workflow. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. The app is called Newark.ai and there's actually a lot it can do, but I wanted to focus on how it might be most beneficial for a fashion designer, which would be creating various types of 3D or line art renderings from existing sketches or photos. If you follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram, you may have seen me post these sketches last week. I started by uploading this flat sketch of a cropped sweatshirt that was drawn in Illustrator. I provided a short description of the sketch in the prompt section and chose a style. And as you can see, there's quite a few options for style, but I wanted to see how a 3D render would look. I chose the number of images I wanted to generate and note that if you're on the free version at the time of this recording, you only get 20 free image generations and they go fast. So you might want to consider keeping this on four or setting it on one and then hit generate. It didn't take very long at all. And these are the four renderings I got. Not bad. And from the four, you can ask it to make a revision or try something different. I asked for it to make it pink. And this is what I got. Again, not bad. Yes, it made the entire picture pink, but this is where my Photoshop skills come in handy and I can just remove the background. So this is a pretty great feature and how I would incorporate this into my current workflow is I would use this as a quick way to show a more realistic sketch to a customer or even a design manager so they can have a better understanding of the design. You know you're going to need the flat sketch for the tech pack, but many customers and a lot of newer designers really don't understand or really like the look of flat sketches, especially as a presentation tool. So if you can use something like this, it will allow you to up the ante on your presentation without the added time you'd have to spend in a 3D program like Clo or Browseware. This time I want to try this with a pencil sketch and this is a very loose and rough illustration. So I was interested in seeing how it would interpret it. I'm going to try a 3d rendering as well as line art. I'm also going to experiment with the creativity level, which will change how closely the rendering mimics the uploaded drawing or picture. In the prompt section, my description will read pencil illustration of an African-American model with long hair, wearing a loose fitting orange wrap top with pockets. Her hands are in the pockets and she's wearing a pair of green shorts. The first one will be a 3D render with a balanced five creativity level. So these were an interesting interpretation. Let's see what happens when we crank up the creativity level to eight. Cool. They definitely appear more detailed in the face. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that her hair looks like locks, not just curly long hair. I think it's also interesting that her hair is sometimes orange and sometimes green. They're definitely creative interpretations of the sketch. Let's see what it looks like as line art. I'll bring the creativity balance back to five and change the style to line art. And let's see what we get. I like these. Some areas are a little overshaded to the point where she looks a little crazy, but I like it. Let's see it at level eight creativity. Mm -hmm. 
These I'm not quite as crazy about. The second one is okay, but the others, not loving them. The last thing I wanna see here is how this would look as a black and white illustration. So keeping it on level eight creativity, I'm just going to take out the references to the color and the prompt. I'm not mad at these, although I'm not sure what's happening on the heads of the first two pictures and why not? Let's see what happens at level 10. Okay, these are a bit too dramatic, but I guess they'd look more interesting if the pencil drawing wasn't so sketchy. So this one, at least the line art, I would use a lot less. From a practical standpoint, I might use the color ones if I wanted to add an element of illustration to a presentation. And if I could get it to the point where it generated the right colors in the right places. What you might be able to do is if you can get a clean black and white illustration, you can bring it back to Photoshop and color it. But again, it's cool, but not something I have much use for. The 3D renderings I might have a little more use for, but getting it right is such a wild card that it's best for use as an ideation tool for yourself, but really not something I think you'd want to present to a client. With these next two, I really wanted to see how it can handle a photo. One experiment is a request from a friend who saw my previous post and asked how it handled making a 3D rendering from a photo of a 2D garment. The other experiment was also from a comment, this one asking if it could create a flat sketch from a photo. Now, I can tell you right off the bat that it won't be able to make a truly accurate flat sketch, one that you can use on a tech pack, but maybe it can generate a good representation that you might be able to use as a working sketch. Let's see. I have to say this was a little tricky because many garment pictures you find online nowadays aren't completely flat and kind of look like there might be a body in them, but this dress was the flattest I could find. So let's see what happens. I'm keeping the prompt pretty generic and just going with photo of a green V-neck mini dress. It's a 3D render and I'm just going to start at creativity level eight. Okay, well, I like the dresses it created. It's just not the dress that's in the picture or the green. Let's try moving the creativity level down to three so it's more accurate. These are much closer to the actual design, although the green is still off. I tried specifying a Pantone from the green. I even tried using a hex code, but in both cases, it didn't generate the proper color. Let's just go ahead and try this as a line art and I'll give you my assessment of both options at the end. So generic prompt, switching to line art and creativity level at two. Not bad. It's definitely not a flat sketch and it's not the line art I was expecting, but I don't hate it. So as you can probably tell from my commentary, I think the first option creating a 3D render from a flat sketch is best. But I do think that some of the other options, particularly the one converting an illustration or just a rough pencil sketch to a 3D drawing is also really helpful. The 2D garment picks, not so much, but they were interesting. By the way, I'm just scratching the surface of the options available here. If you go into advanced settings, you can type in the prompts of things you don't want to see. You can change the seed and you can read more about the seed and how to use them on the site. Increase the number of steps to add more detail to your image and the prompt creativity level to decide how closely the image should match the prompt. So a lot more settings you can try out to get the rendering you want. Just keep your eye on the number of images you're generating. 
Also note that it's entirely possible for me to re-render some of the images I wasn't crazy about and get something new that I am. A lot of the time, the beautiful image you see posted on social media did not happen on the first try. So as you play with these AI tools, leave space and time for multiple tries. But what I most want you to understand is that AI tools can help with ideation, but they are not a substitute for fashion design software. Those 3D renderings will help you quickly see what the design could look like on a body. But remember, it's a quick representation. It's not actually 3D. And for sure, if you're going to produce physical garments, all those technical skills that we talk about all the time on this channel will come into play because you'll still need to create that flat sketch, that tech pack. And if you're using 3D fashion design software, you still need to make a pattern. Where this tool fits best is in your design development ideation phase. Those green dresses weren't the dress I uploaded, which is probably a good thing because you don't want to be knocking off other people's designs, but they certainly were very nice options that could work for your customer. You might have to do some color tweaking and background removal in Photoshop later, but those 3D renderings could create a very compelling presentation and help your design manager or a buyer or a customer say yes to buying that design on paper. Or it can help you design what styles people aren't responding to and you won't have to spend time developing them. There's definitely some great practical use cases for Newark, but overall, the idea is to use it as a tool to make you more efficient and to use it in conjunction with, not instead of, your current fashion design software. Thanks for watching today's video. If you are new to digital fashion design software, click the links in the description to sign up for one of my courses and to get some great freebies. And check out some of the other videos on this channel for more digital fashion design tips. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.